turn to the book of Joshua, chapter 23. The book of Joshua, chapter 23. I want to talk to you about seven things that will never fail. We'll probably not get through that uh, whole list this evening because of time, but um, maybe come up with half of them or so forth and so on. But I'm so glad that we have someone that will never fail us, aren't you? Have you ever had a friend, a real friend, fail you? I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but I can see in the way that you look. And if I was to ask you to raise your hand, you'd probably raise your hand. That really does hurt, doesn't it? And uh, you think about it and uh, so forth and so on. Well, we need to remember, well, let's not try to hurt someone else. Let's try to be faithful. Let's try to be the kind of Christian that we would not reach out and hurt others. And sometimes we do. Maybe we don't mean to, but uh, we do. And so it's a very important thing for Christians to stay together, isn't it? Christians need to work together, not pull apart. And um, during my years of, of pastoring, I've seen and heard and experienced some terrible things in churches, absolutely terrible things in churches. And um, I remember that uh, in our community, uh, there were several churches in the area, of course, and uh, there was one church that one man ran the, ran the church, one man. And uh, I've mentioned him before, but one man. For some reason, the pastor never said anything, the deacons never said anything, and the man wasn't even an official uh, in the church. And uh, the church finally folded up and closed its doors. I never will forget driving by that church a couple of weeks later after it had closed. And I remembered that it was a thriving church at one time. So I was driving down the road and I looked over and uh, the doors were locked. And then you'd go by there at night on a church night going to your church and there'd be no lights. Sad, isn't it? So, so sad. People fail us, but the Lord never fails us. I'm so glad. Let's begin in verse 14 here, uh, the book of Joshua, chapter 23. And, uh, well, we'll go back to verse 13. Know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive you out than any of these nations from before you, but they shall be snares and traps unto you and scourges in your sides and thorns in your eyes until you perish from off the good land which the Lord your God hath given you. I went back and read that because I wanted to say this. We need to be very, very careful the turns that we make in life. We need to be very, very careful about the statements that we make in life and how we live in life. Because God has a way of putting us in our place. You see, that's what's happening in this situation here. God wanted to bless Joshua and these people. He wanted to take them out and take them into a, a rich place. But they began to turn inwardly and do things that they were not called to do. So what did God do? God put them in their place. Now, the Lord doesn't deal with the devil's children in discipline. And I'll, I'll say more about that later on. But he does discipline his own children. He'll discipline the church. And he'll discipline a preacher, deacons. You see, you see what I'm saying? We as a local church need to remember that we belong to him. And this church is his. He wants to bless us. He wants to bless the church. But what happens when people get proud, like the man I was telling you about, and so forth and so on? And so the Lord is just simply saying to them, you know for a certainty that the Lord God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you. Look at this. But they shall be snares and traps unto you and scourges in your sides and thorns in your eyes until you perish from off this good land which the Lord God has given you. I wonder if you'd think back 
at the time that that happened to you and you were hurt or maybe you reached out and hurt others we need to be very careful about that because the Lord will deal with us and deal with us severely and sometimes he has to to put us back on the narrow road, narrow road so that we'll keep on going and honor him I've been reading a book by a well-known author very good author, very good preacher. And there's some things I disagree with him on and some things uh, I, I agree with him on, but he's made some very good statements in, in some areas. And he made this statement. He said, at the judgment seat of Christ, there's going to be sorrow, weeping, because of not fulfilling their calling. And there will be losses at the judgment seat of Christ. And that's about all he said. But think about that. Is that true? Is it true? Well, the Bible says that we need to be faithful. And when we're faithful at the judgment seat of Christ, we'll be rewarded. Amen? But I believe that we will suffer loss if we did not obey him when he gave us directions. Amen? And so he's dealing with his own people here. Well, that's what I'm trying to say, basically, is God deals with his own people to bring us back in the fold, to get us right, and then to use us greatly. How is God using you right now? I'm asking every one of us individually, and I'm thinking about myself. How is God using you right now? Are you a tool in his hand? Am I too in his hand? The past few weeks, did God use you to be a blessing to someone that greatly needed it? A load was lifted, the way was made brighter because of you and because of me? Or maybe the Lord had to chasten us. And uh, verse 14, and behold, this day I'm going the way of all earth, and you know in all of your hearts and in all of your souls that not one thing hath failed of all the good things which the Lord your God spake concerning you. All came to pass unto you, and not one thing hath failed thereof. Therefore it shall come to pass that as all good things are come upon you which the Lord your God promised you, so shall the Lord bring up on you all evil things until he hath destroyed you from off this good land which the Lord your God hath given you. When you trans transgressed the covenant of the Lord your God, when he commanded you and have gone and served other gods and have bowed before to them, then shall the anger of the Lord be kindled. That's an interesting statement, isn't it? Now, the Bible says that God's angry at the wicked every day. But it says here, the Lord kindled his fire, his, kind his anger is kindled against you. Would you want the Lord to have his anger kindled against you? I sure would not. Because he knows exactly where to push the buttons, the right buttons to deal with us, to deal with you, and to deal with me. And sometimes what the Lord does is not pleasant, but then when we come out on the other side and we're able to get on our knees and say, Lord, I see what you've done, and I understand why you did it, and Father, you want to make me a better man. You want to make me a better woman. Thank you, Father. Thank you. And uh, I want to keep myself in a place where he's using me, and I hope that that's where you are as well. And uh, so, verse 16, When you have transgressed the covenant of the Lord your God, which he commanded you, and have gone and served other gods, and have bound yourselves to them, then shall the anger of the Lord be kindled against you, and you shall perish quickly off the good land which he hath given unto you. We want to be on the, in the good land, don't we? We want to serve, we want to walk, and we want to serve him in the good land. Now let me remind you of verse 14 one more time. And behold, this day I am going 
the way of all the earth, and you know all of your hearts and all of your souls that one thing hath failed of, not, of all the good things which the Lord your God spake concerning you. All have come to pass unto you, and not one thing hath failed thereof. Isn't that a great verse? When God begins to bless your right with him, and you're letting him work in your life, what a wonderful thing. And he'll never fail you. I've listed these things here, seven things that will never, never fail. Now, many things in this world that we dabble in and get involved in, we fail, don't we? All of us do that. But when we see victory, it's a grand thing, isn't it? Now, here's the Lord up in heaven wanting to bless me. I believe that with all of my heart. When I'm praying of a morning before I get out of bed and begin my day, and then during the day when I set aside a time to pray, and then before at night before I go to sleep and I'm, be, and I'm praying, it depends on how sleepy I am, and I want to sense that the Lord's saying, Son, you're in the right place. But I also know what it is when he says you're not in the right place and how he can deal with us. Now think about this. He wants you and I to be men and women that succeed. I believe he really wants that in spiritual things and, and in many, many other things as well. Now, we're not impregnable. Satan will always be looking for that weak spot. What does the Bible say? Be sober. Be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil. Now, listen to this. A roaring lion. Now, somebody said Satan is uh, most dangerous uh, when you don't hear from him and you don't see him. I'll agree with that. But let me ask you this question. If you know anything about them, lions, did you know that they don't roar until they've killed their prey? Do you know that? If you know anything about Africa and these places where these lions run wide open, they do not roar until they've killed their prey. Why? Because they know how to sneak up on their prey, and they will be very, very cautious. But after they've made the kill, then you can hear them for miles. Would you want the devil to defeat you like that and defeat me like that? and have the privilege of roaring because he defeated you or defeated me. And I believe the Lord wants us to have the victory. Now, we fail sometimes because we're critical, don't we? We, we let the devil creep in and we're critical of other people and it's easy to do that. We're human beings. Um, we're not really the friend to others at times the way that we should. Um, but we have one that will never fail us. He will never be untrue to us. Now, that's true, isn't it? You agree with me? So let's ask the Lord to help us to be just like that as much as we can. Now, we'll fail at times, and sometimes it feels like we're crumbling in our dust. But he will never fail us, and he will never forsake us. Now, let me just give you a few thoughts tonight. And we're going to have a few moments left, but put down just a few things uh, with me. Number one, it's very comforting. It's very comforting to know that the Lord Jehovah never fails. Is that comforting to you? You that are watching by the Internet, is that comforting to you? You're his child. You may hold a position in a church. You may be called to preach. You may be a, a deacon. I, I, we could go on and on and on and on. But the Lord himself wants to see us in a place of tremendous victory because he never fails. Write down Deuteronomy 31, if you will. Deuteronomy 31 and verse 8. And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee. Is that not a great verse? Yes. Now that's Old Testament, but that's a great verse. He goes before you. Now listen, I've, I've been preaching quite a long time, but I know what it is to fail, 
and fail miserably. And I know what it's like to look back at, at what I did and say, that was absolutely stupid. Why in the world did I allow Satan to get a foothold? And he wants a foothold in my life, and he wants a foothold in your life because we affect so many. We start out with ourself. Our actions and words and habits affect us, amen? But it also affects our family. Husband and wife, father-daughter, father-son, and on and on we could go. Some of you have several children, some of you have a few, but our actions affect them. Now think about this. We affect one another in this church. I was told, um, and this is not gossip, it was, a, it was something that's very serious, and it's a matter of prayer uh, with some other folk in the area, and there's a church in the area right now that's going through dark, dark days because of skirmishes among the membership. The devil loves that. I mean, he just actually, actually loves that. So watch what it says in Deuteronomy. And the Lord, he it is that goeth before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. You see, the Lord will bring us to a place where it's easy to believe him. If we will obey him, if we will stay in the scriptures, if we will pray, if we will witness. Now, I've noticed something. When I am really serious at witnessing, whether I'm giving out tracts, whether I'm knocking on doors or whatever, but when I get serious with that, the first thing that happens is, is the devil just hits me right between the eyeballs. You know, uh, I've said before, and you know this, and, and I'm not bragging, but I, I've got to do it. Uh, I, I put out tracks over the mall. I put them on the windshields. I give them out inside. I walk up to them, and I give, and I give out tracks. And it's a sad thing to walk back out of the parking lot and see that if somebody's throwing all those tracks on the ground. Well, I pick them up take them with me, I'm going to give them out to somebody else. And uh, you start to witness to somebody and they'll cuss you out, I mean, right to your face. Well, the devil is orchestrating all of that to try to make me stop wanting to witness. Do, do, do you like being yelled at and laughed at, cursed? No, nobody does. However, I need to be faithful and you need to be faithful. And so Jehovah, our God, what? He never, never fails. Now, secondly, the Holy Spirit never fails. First of all, it's comforting to know that the Lord Jehovah never fails. The Holy Spirit never fails. Write down 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 through 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 11, and you'll read that tonight before you go to bed. You'll find out that the Holy Spirit never fails. Now, we're indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Uh, Jesus is in heaven at the right hand of God the Father, but the Holy Spirit, God himself, lives in us. Now, it's great to know that he's leading us. You agree? It's great to know he is leading us. I'll be very honest with you. I'm scared when I try to take the horns myself. I know better than that, but so many times I do it. You know why? Because I'm human. But just to know the Holy Spirit's on the inside. Um, think about it like this. The Holy Spirit can do more through you. And he wants to do more and more through you. Think of the joy that would bring to you, to your family, and to your church family. Amen? And so the Lord himself will comfort us and never fail. The Holy Spirit never fails. And then number three, and I, I'm so thankful for this one. Listen to it. The Lord's compassions never fail. 
Uh, write down Lamentations 3, 21 through 23. This I recall to my mind, therefore that I have hope, and it is of the Lord, and it is his mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. Is that not a great verse? Now you say, well, Brother Boofer, that's Old Testament. That's okay, it's Bible. Amen? Um, I gave you 1 Corinthians, but then I'm, I'm quoting another one here. And the reason I'm doing it is because I want you to have it. All right, now let's go back. The very comforting to know that the Lord Jehovah never fails. Think about that again and again and again. When you get up in the morning and you've said your prayers and you start out, just keep saying in your mind as you're getting out to wherever you're going, the Lord Jehovah will never fail me. Get that in your mind, get that in your heart, and let the Lord use you. And then the Holy Spirit will never fail. And he's with you everywhere you go and with me everywhere we go. Now I want to ask you to do this. From now on until Sunday, I want you to be praying that God will give us a great day for homecoming. A great day for homecoming. Come yourself. Invite others. As a matter of fact, do this. Go to our directory and call some of the members that's not been here for a while and say, hey, we've been missing you. Now, this is homecoming. We'd like to have you. We need you here. And have a great day in the Lord. Wouldn't that be a great thing? And I believe that the Lord is ready to move us forward. Pray for the couple that was here Sunday. They liked the church. They loved it. And um, the lady, she loves to work with seniors. He likes to work with youth and so forth and so on. So the Lord may be beginning some things here, and we want to pray about that. But then we know that his compassions fail not. When we get back, we'll finish this and look at the rest of the things that we want to mention uh, here. But Sunday morning for homecoming, I want to preach on the subject. There's got to be a heaven somewhere. There must be a heaven somewhere for our homecoming. Where is our home? Heaven. And when we get there, that'll be the grandest homecoming. Amen? And what a tremendous, tremendous thought that is. Let's stand, please, and we'll be dismissed in prayer. Father, these verses are tremendous. Your Bible is full of great things. Your Word is full of encouragements. But it's also full of uh, telling us to be careful and to watch out and to stay in the Word. Stay in the Word. Thy Word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against Thee. I ask that You'll help us to do just that. Lord, we love this church and we love these people. And I just pray that You'll bless them in a wonderful way. Now, in this congregation tonight, Heavenly Father, if there's a need that's not been mentioned, if there's a heartache that's not been brought to uh, our attention, I pray for these folk that you'll just wrap your arms around them and that you'll lift them up. But then we ask that you'll use everyone that goes out of this building tonight to reach a lost man or a woman, boy or girl, sometime this week. If we're in heaven before Sunday, that'll be okay. But if we are here throughout this rest of this week, help us to see that we witness to folk and that we will see people born again. I pray for the people that are praying about coming here to help us and uh, to be with us. And if that's your will, Father, we want that and we want to see others come in. But right now I pray that you will understand that we're turning that over to you and want your will to be done. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and have a nice weekend and a nice...